welcome. Thank you for joining us for our before slavery webinar today with our special guest, Frank Stephon Jordan, who is the best an Amazon best selling author. He has authored seven books. Um, you can we have shared the link in the panel. You can check out his books. Today, uh, today's webinar, I want to focus on art, especially knowing that art is uh, a, a medium of storytelling, especially among black people. Uh, here in Southern Africa, we know stories of our ancestors through storytelling, uh, passed from generation to generation. And the second one is art, especially on rock paintings. So now, if we hear that our art was altered in history, that means our history might as well as been compromised. So today's webinar is on that, focusing especially on the Renaissance art. So how did you come to discover the old images before the Renaissance that we'll be talking about? And if you have a slide, will you also share? Oh, yeah. The yeah, hey, listen, listen, um, <laughs> when you, Remember this date right here called the Renaissance period. I'm going to, you know, just bring it up to speed a little bit. You know, during the time of the 1400s, okay, you had European painters like Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, and you had these guys, they were very famous, and you had another guy called Rembrandt. Um, and what they did during the time of the Renaissance period, when you go and look up the word Renaissance, the word Renaissance means to rebirth and to renew. Um, and what they were rebirthing and they were renewing, they were actually colonizing and they were actually whitewashing all the black art, okay, prior to that. Because prior to the 1400s, the only art that you would see, you know, that was European art, you would see the statues of guys like, you know, Alexander the Greek, you know, uh, 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 Darius, guys like that, that were actually, you know, the leaders and the conquerors of Rome. But as far as like you mentioned, um, you know, as far as like the real, the ancient, ancient, ancient art, you know, that you can go over to Jerusalem and you can go back to Egypt and you can go to certain parts of Africa. And even back during the 31st, during the, uh, BC, 31 BC, even during, there's a city called uh, uh, Duropa, Europus, Dura Europus, okay? And when you go back and sort of, you know, you visit, and when you go back and when you go to the museums and when you go to the, the archives and the steelies and you go to the to the, the caves and when you look, okay, there is dark art. And these guys, what they were doing, they were paid a commission, okay, by the popes of Rome during this time, during the Renaissance period, to destroy all the dark art, you know, and all of a sudden just colonize and, and just whitewash everything. I'm going to show you something, right? Okay, this is a book right here. And people forget about books. People forget about libraries. This is a book right here called Heritage, Civilization, and the Jews. Okay, because according to history and according to, you know, facts. Okay, let's just put it out. Now, this is a book right here that describes, okay, the children of Israel as being dark people. Now, people, they, they'll argue with you all day long. Okay, now, if you know that, and not to turn this into like a biblical conversation. Okay, but this is ancient art as well, too. Now, people, they can agree with you all day and say, you know, that they know that Christ was a black man and Christ, you know, well, how did this, this is a picture right here of Ezekiel in this book right here. All right. You can clearly see the man is, you know, has an Afro and what they did. And there was no, let me say this too. There was actually no, no European art. Okay. That was actually like prior. Okay. To the time where the Greeks conquered, it was all dark art because in today's time, okay, Pat, Okay, we have a camera, and what happens with that camera is that we take pictures of what we see, things that are actually there. Now, back prior to the 1400s in 31 BC and even prior to that, we painted what we saw, okay? And, 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 and mistakenly, and make no mistakes about it, this is what we saw. And so we painted it, all right? <laughs> Images of dark people, even Christ, okay? As, you know, the... You know, uh, 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 the guy that posted the image of Christ, his name is Caesar Borgia, okay? He was a pope, okay? He was the son of the pope, the sixth of Alexander, you know, sixth of Rome. You know, he, he, that's a real man that posted that picture that came into play and tried to deceive the whole world. And the reason for that, I know I'm ramming on a little bit,
But the reason for that is for, it was for white supremacy. A lot of our people get scared to even mention that name. And a lot of our people get intimidated when they hear stuff like that. But we're the only people, most of us are the only people on this earth that have like a, a, a fear and they shun away and they're afraid to learn their own history. When they come across people like yourself and, and Sister Pat, you know, they don't, you know, they kind of shun away from it. And they're almost like they're ashamed of us because we're bringing out the truth. You understand what I'm trying to say? That's all called brainwashing and that's all called white supremacy. And I got news for you. It's worked. It has worked. Mm, that's right. That's right. So um, next to the, to the next question, uh, may you tell us a little about your discovery as it relates to whitewashing of the artistic representation? Right, right, right. Listen, you, you, you got, listen, there was a, there was a, um, okay, let's go back to the 1400s. Okay, and we're going to continue on that. During the time of the 1400s, okay, they were paid a commission to whitewash all the dark art. Um, and that was for white supremacy. So when you go to places like Dororopa, and when you go to places like Jerusalem, even a lot of places in Africa, you still have the images, okay, of the dark art over there. All right. So when you come over here to America, because listen, to subdue a people that was once great and to subdue their minds and to make them subservient, okay, mm -hmm. under you, you have to put images of yourself, okay, so we can worship the images of themselves. And that's what makes us subservient, okay, to nations. That's what especially has made us subservient to Europeans. Because if, look, if you wake up in the morning and you look at the news and you see a European, you go to sleep, you turn on the TV, you see Europeans, you open up a book, and the only thing that they're showing you in, 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 in the classroom, okay, is Christopher Columbus and uh, uh, Albert Einstein, of course you're going to get it in your brain that they are the superior people. They must be the people that they say they are. But when you look back, okay, this is a picture right here, okay, of actually Aristotle, okay? This is a picture of Aristotle that is in this book right here, okay? The same book. Okay, the same exact book. This is a picture of Aristotle, all right? This is something that they're not going to teach you. This is something that he, he was a great philosopher along with Socrates as well, too. This is something that they're not going to teach you in school because how dare you learn this stuff to, to, to learn self-esteem? You know, uh, uh, you may learn self-esteem. You may start to actually figure things out and you may start to actually figure out, okay, how great you really were, okay? Just like during the time of slavery, when we came over here, okay, we built up this place. You know, it's it's no, and, and I'm going to get this out too. There's no history book that I have in my possession, and I have over 1,200, okay? Uh, there's no book that I have read, no history book that I've read where Europeans captured us in Southwest Africa during the, a transatlantic slave trade, okay? Mm -hmm. it, now, you may question yourself. Okay, we're still up under the British tariffs and we're still up under the ancient British laws. We're still slaves, okay, to the British. Why do you think, let me ask you a question. Why do you think we, we still speak a broken English? If you was to go over to England today, they can understand every word that you're saying. Okay, we just speak a broken English over here in America, but over there in Great Britain and England, they speak the pure British language. Over here in America, we speak a broken English language because we're still up under the people of England and up under the people of the Britons. Okay, we still we still belong to them as slaves. Okay, one of the first languages that they teach the kids in school over in America is what the English language. The English language. Why the English language? It's because we're still property of the British and the English. You ever ask yourself that? Why English? Why can't we speak our original uh, uh, native tongue like Hebrew? Okay. Why can't we speak our native tongue? Because we still belong to the British. Okay. Mm -hmm. Queen Queen is um Queen Elizabeth over there in, in, in over there that lives in England. They know that too. Okay, that's why everybody calls her the Queen. You have queens all over the place, but no one is called. She's the Queen. Wow, she is the queen. That's that's deep. I'm I'm starting to get scared, but I'm getting used to it. <laughs> so over to the next question. Back to the art. Um. So in your in your studies, which images that are powerful and that are 
popular have you come across that are misrepresented? We want to see more of that so that next time we go to a museum or see it on TV, we'll be like, Frank say. <laughs> hey, listen, listen, I, look, and, and these are, listen, these are, <laughs> these are books that I actually pulled out of my own personal library, you know, um, and thank you for I make right that I use in my own books as well, too. And also as well as I actually went around and took pictures. Now, this is a book right here. This is a Russian book. Okay. Uh, it's the, called the icon book this is a picture right here over in russia in moscow okay in its temples of moscow as christ okay being a black man i didn't write this book i didn't write this book okay these are pictures that are still over there in russia this is an ancient icon book okay it's written in russia it was sent it was sent to me okay from moscow and you can clearly see okay that christ is a dark-skinned man Okay, along with his disciples, Peter and Paul in this picture. So one of the things, like I said, okay, that's misrepresented, okay, throughout the whole earth. If you want to unplug a people from their power, you have to brainwash them. Okay, so they can be what disarmed, mentally disarmed. So whatever worked for us in the past, okay, whatever worked for us in the past, we have been disconnected from that. So now we're here in America, now we're governed and we're living up under the American system, which anything goes. You can become anything, you can do anything, you can be anything, okay? This is a Roman society that we're living up under. That's the reason why the stadiums are round, like the ancient Greek stadiums. That's the reason why they teach the kids Roman numerals. That's the reason why you have the Roman structures, okay, in the engineering, okay, on most of the banks and also... You know, in places like Zimbabwe as well, too. That's the reason why Capitona is a lot of cities that's throughout the um, United States that's still named after the Roman Empire. Athens, New York, Attica, New York. These are all Roman. These are all Roman names. OK, you have Athens, Georgia. OK, these are all Roman names. Why are these cities named after Rome? Because we're still living up under the ancient Roman greco empire and it tells you that in the, it tells you that in the bible how we're gonna be living up under that okay but this book right here in russia okay that came from russia is just full of pictures okay now i can show you okay now this is another picture okay of christ as well too that's still over there in moscow okay showing you that he's a dark-skinned man now you got to ask yourself where did the european image okay of christ come from his name is caesar borgia Okay, he's the second born son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. You can actually look that up. Caesar Borgia, he posted a picture of Christ for white supremacy. All right? Mm -hmm. All the dark, look, let me say this too. The disciples, they was dark too. America came up with this wonderful thing, with this wonderful place, this magical place in 1934 called Hollywood, which is a city outside of Los Angeles where you can actually fix characters to be whatever you want them to be you could pretend and you can act, okay, to be whoever you want to be. Cleopatra, she's down, Elizabeth Taylor, she's portraying herself as being Cleopatra when everybody knows Cleopatra was a black woman, okay? But systematically, this is what happens, Sister Pat, this is what happens. You know, if you're looking at the idiot box, which they call a TV, when you're looking at that every day, all day long, when you're looking at that every day, all day long, Okay, 24 hours a day, all day, and the only thing you're seeing is white actors portraying to be you. Okay, what else are you gonna think? Okay, you're gonna leave the research up to them. You're gonna leave the research up to uh, uh, Albert Einstein. You're going guys like Jacques Cousteau. Jacques Cousteau even went down into the Red Sea. Okay, and found the chariots that the children of Israel went through the Red Sea. You can go back over to you can go back over to, to Egypt, okay, and see the dark pictures that's still left over there on the wall of dark people over there. The only thing you gotta do is get a passport and travel, okay, and visit. Please visit libraries and visit as many museums as possible. Don't don't leave it up to the internet to teach your kids. Don't leave it up to the internet, okay, to teach yourself. Go physically to a library. Go physically to a museum because museums are full. Okay, of history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's so powerful. That's really powerful because right now we are in an attention economy and it's so sad for especially us young people 
that we are caught up in this attention economy. We are caught up in entertainment. Right. And we no longer have time for books. Books are boring because psychologically as well, our minds have been primed to have such short attention span right. that we don't read anymore. We, we want to watch things. And when we, what we watch is what's presented to us. So the, the process of brainwashing is even more powerful. And that is why the representation right now is really, really important. So that, okay, in, in the idiot box, <laughs> at least may there be enough black images so that we don't entirely forget who we are and our history. And may our stories, our books be um, converted into video and audio so that we catch up with the times, you right. know, but that was powerful about reading books and visiting museums. Look, you're absolutely, you're absolutely correct in everything that you said, you know, in order to control the people, you hide the truth from them. You know, the same people, the same people that was actually handpicked, okay, during the slave trade from the late 1500s up to the 1800s, okay, there wasn't, listen, when they went down there, when they went down to Southwest Africa, okay, they didn't, they didn't handpick a bunch of people that didn't know nothing. We didn't, you know, we didn't know nothing. We was just running around with bones in our noses, earrings, and we didn't know nothing. And all of a sudden, the Europeans came and rescued us and, you know, taught us everything. That is a blatant, that is one of the biggest lies ever to history. When they went down, when they went down to Southwest Africa during the time of King Dahomey, Okay, they were actually getting doctors, engineers, lawyers, blacksmiths. They were getting the people actually, okay, to build up their kingdom in this place called America. So once we came over here, then they put us right to work. I haven't read nowhere and I haven't read no history book where it says that they took the time, okay, and let us go to school four years and teach us how to plant. Excuse me. Okay, the Indians taught Columbus how to plant when they came over here. Okay, so they put us to work. Listen, Sister uh, Modessa and, and, and Pat. As far as we know, as far as I know, when we came over off those slave ships, men and women and kids, they put us right to work. They sold us, okay, right. They didn't, they didn't wait, okay? And there's no history book that proves that they showed us anything or they educated us on anything. If that's the case, they could have done it. They could have built this place themselves. Why are they going to spend time, okay, to teach us to do anything, they could have did that themselves. You understand what I'm trying to say? So, you know, it's, it's a lot of times people get it confused and people get it mixed up. When we came over to America, we were the engineers. We were the doctors, okay? We were the people that built this place up. We were the inventors, okay? We were the people, okay, the astrologists, the ancient astrologists, okay? So when we came over to America and history is always on our side. So what does this information mean uh, to to us going forward? How can I know it's singing you... a little bit. Good. Yeah, <laughs> it does. It does. It's new. You know, it's shocking. It's new. It's shocking, and you you gotta digest it. You know, it, it's something that you need time to digest and think about. But as yeah, it, something rings in your soul. You know that there's something to to this. You know, right. so. What does this mean going forward? How can we use this information? What's your vision um, for people knowing this? Re-education, Re point blank, <laughs> re-education. All right, it starts at the home. If, if we're taught, if, if, if we're teaching our kids, you know, Mary had a little lamb, uh, feet was white as snow, um, you know, snow white, okay? When we're teaching our kids that, we're teaching them the American way of white supremacy, okay? Everything that is associated with beauty, everything that is associated with, that has anything to pedestal, okay, or the pentacle, okay, of beauty, it just so happened to be a European look, okay? So if your kids are growing up, okay, thinking, you know, such, they're not, they're going to have a very low self-esteem about themselves okay mm -hmm. if they're looking at tv and they're looking at the kardashians and they're looking at tv okay uh, uh, uh you know at the kardashians and they're looking at other european models on tv okay they're gonna have a low self-esteem about themselves and then automatically what's gonna happen is that they're gonna gravitate toward that look okay of the europeans but not knowing like i said we have to re-educate 
okay, and let our kids know, no, 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 we're the greatest people on this planet. Why do you think Europeans, why do you think they always, okay, and, and, and you know, they're trying to go on the beaches, they're trying to get tans, okay, like us. If, if, if black is so bad, you know, and, and it's a stigma to that, okay, why are you on down in Miami, okay, or wherever they go on vacation, why do you try to get tan just like us? Okay, if it's so bad. You understand what I'm trying to say? Right. Why do you try to get go down to Dr. Miami, okay, and get the proper sil the silicone injections or the fat, okay, to try to look like the beautiful black woman? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. So uh, are there other are people who have documented these discoveries uh, uh, that you have documented? Like yes. we want to do your library so that we can catch up with you on this knowledge, okay? <laughs> yes. Hey, listen, listen. Yeah, it's, like I, books so hey. that the audience can read. Right. Hey, the, listen. You can go to the library. Look up Russian icons. Look up Russian icons. Okay. Full of over there, in Moscow, over in the castles. When you look at it, because listen, if you if if, if you were to go to the libraries, okay, if you were to hear stuff about like you know, uh, 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 history in Russia with blacks or in Moscow. If you would look, just look up, go, you can go online and you can find these ancient paintings online. Look up black icons. Okay, look up black, the Hellenistic blacks in Rome. Let me show you something, okay? This is another book right here, okay, called The, the, the Negro in Greek and Roman Civilization. Remember that, what I told you about the library? Okay. <laughs> This is called, this book, this book right here is called, I'm going to say it again, The Negro in Greek, okay, The Negro in Greek in Roman Civilization. There were blacks that was living down in Greek. They were just called Hellenistic Jews. They were black Jews speaking the Greek language. Socrates was one of them, all right? Now, this book right here, okay, is full, okay, of dark images, okay, of blacks. Okay, living down in, 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 in Greece, Athens, Rome, it's full of them. And these pictures are still, and these these potteries, these things are still in the museums down there, okay, in Rome. And look, let me say this. I'm going I'm to get, get a couple more. This whole book is just full of them, okay? And that, let me say this too. This is the stuff that they've hid from us because why? Because it brings about a certain self-esteem about yourself, a certain awareness about your kids. Your kids don't have to think that and they don't have to go to work. Okay, and put their head down when they see Mr. Finkelbaum come in the hallway. Okay, and our people, you know, our people are still scared. Okay, and a lot of our people are still scared to look Europeans straight in the eye, man. A lot of times we be at work, we'll see, uh, 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 we'll see Miss Noosebaum coming down the hallway, or we'll see, or we'll see Becky. And a lot of our people still got that slave mentality, Sister Pat, where they'll literally put their head down and say good morning and keep on going. Okay, one of the biggest fears, okay, that the Europeans have, okay, is us learning our self-identity, okay, and us coming together as a people. That's the reason why they spent billions of dollars diseducating and white supremacy. So we'll never, ever come back into knowing who we are because that's power. Once you have a church over here, somebody calling himself a Jehovah Witness over here, you're calling himself a, a, a pop look over here, you're calling, them, you're calling yourself by 50 different denominations of religion. We'll never come back into knowing who we are. Do you think we got off them slave ships and we were celebrating Halloween? We was looking at each other going, happy Halloween! You think we was doing that when we got off them slave ships? Do you think we was actually celebrating Thanksgiving when we came off them slave ships? This mm -hmm. stuff was all incorporated within our, within the American way, okay? And until this day, we celebrate those things, okay? Because we're living up under a government of the European British structure, okay? Now, okay, this is another picture, okay, that's over there in Greece, okay? This is a pottery, okay, that's over there in one of the Greek museums, okay, of a black person living in Greece. You can't make stuff up like this. You, can, you cannot make stuff up like this. And let me say this too, stuff like this, like I said, is in libraries. If this book, this book may not be in circulation no more after this show. <laughs> it may be all of a sudden, outsourced okay <laughs> because that's what they do okay, okay. go all ahead right. all right so now we are going to the audience questions uh, uh thank you for attending everyone 
This is a two-way conversation, so please feel free to ask any questions you have. Just type them in the Q&A. So a question from Cordero Holmes is, how do we overcome this and never fall victim to it again? Mm. Re-education. Re-education. Re Re-education. Um, go research. You know, um, I have seven books, okay, that I've actually you know, written with pictures, documentation. This is stuff I didn't make up. You know, doc, that's the reason why I bought the books and I'm showing you out of the books that I got because, you know, I have my own books that I've written, okay? But I think that it's more validity if I show you an actual book that was actually written by someone else. So no one will say, okay, well, you made, no, I didn't, I didn't make this up. This is, this is in another book and books that I've gotten from libraries and I've ordered. You know, so how do we overcome that? You have to teach your kids the truth. Okay, Christmas, okay. You know, that's another tradition, okay, that a lot of people in the churches, they celebrate, okay, that you can't find in the Bible. Mother's, Mother's Day, okay. Call your mom up every day, okay, if you have that pleasure of calling your mom, okay, or your dad, and tell them that you love them every day. Tell them how you feel about them. Go shopping for them. Take them out sometime. Okay, and my books can be found on Amazon. Okay, uh, Frank Zakwan Jordan. Okay, you can't just let someone tell you or mark on the calendar when to love your parents or when to buy your mother and father gifts. Okay, love your parents every day. All right, Thanksgiving. Okay, during the time of the Pico Wars, okay, um, up under John Winthrop, when he waged war on the Pico Indians, okay, that's where the holiday Thanksgiving stemmed from. Pico Indians, look it up. Why are we so afraid? And why do we apologize for telling our kids the truth? Why do we apologize for being truthful and honest? Period. We're the only people on this planet that we apologize for being right. I don't understand that. You understand what I'm saying, Sister Pat? You can have entertainers which shall be nameless, Okay, because I don't want to put nothing out there, which shall be nameless. They can get on ABC News and they can be as right as the sky is blue. But then they'll go back. Oh, I apologize for what I said. I'm so sorry. I apologize. And, you know, I'm, you know, going to do community service in the work, you know, in the neighborhood. I'm going to do community service work. And I'm so sorry. That's what you call a sellout right there. Me, I don't apologize for nothing. Okay, as far as if I'm right and what I know and what I've discovered, okay, over 32 years, I'm not apologizing for nothing because I know that it's right, okay? Because my thing is this, okay? You either die, look, you either die for, you either, you either stand for something or you die for nothing. You just don't have so many black people that's out here that are willing to tell the truth and to stand up. You got a bunch of cowards out here amongst black men. They rather just sit back and, you know, yes, master, I'm not gonna, why don't you stop saying what you're saying? Yes, master. I'm not one of those Negroes. A lot of times you may have Europeans, Sister Modessa and Sister Pat. A lot of times you may have Europeans that may try to mix themselves into, into what we went through. It's a difference between indentured servants and it's a difference between slaves, okay? The indentured servants were just employees, okay, of the people over there in Denmark and Ireland, okay? They were vagabonds and prisoners that came over here and worked okay, their debt off and work their prison sentence off. And as a reward, what the indentured servants did, they got, they got over 100 acres of land, okay? And if the, if the land came with the slaves, okay, if the land came with the slaves, they were rewarded 60 more. It's the difference between being a slave and being employed, okay, by white America, okay? We're going through the same thing. No, you haven't. No, no you haven't. We work a nine to five. It's a difference once again between being employed, okay, by your own people, okay, and it's a difference between being a slave or being forced, okay, into slavery. The two words differ. And, and um, as we've had other speakers come on and, and agree with you, the Bible is black history. Look, the reason why so many black people fail, black kids fail history, it was because there's no black history taught. Okay, that's the reason why we failed black history because no, who wants to learn about George Washington and chopping down a damn cherry tree in his wooden teeth, okay? Which was a lot. <laughs> who the hell has wooden teeth, okay? That's the reason why black kids fail it because there's nothing in there about us. It's boring. Mm hmm That's true. Okay, well, everybody that has joined us today, we really appreciate you coming. I'm glad that you were here to hear this firsthand yourself. Straight from Frank Jordan's mouth, um, our guest today, I really appreciate 
him um, sharing. He's written seven books. He's acclaimed. He's awarded. And he's done his due diligence. He's done his research. And Frank, we thank you. Hey, thank um, you for having me. Mm -hmm. And so we also ask everyone that um, uh, attended today, please support our ongoing efforts to bring the Before Slavery Museum to life. It is an interactive experience when, when it's built and you can come and see it. You will not only read about stuff and see things and hear things, and smell. I mean, it's, it's immersive. It's an experience. And we want you to get the feeling of what it could have been like to live in a place. It is your home and these are your people and these are your laws. And these are, this is your culture. And, and you can follow that culture back thousands of years. We can't even imagine that. But we want you to imagine it when you come to the Before Slavery exhibit. We ask you um, to support these efforts. Um, I'll put, we'll put a link in here that you can click and donate. Um, and any amount is greatly appreciated. It goes straight to helping to curate uh, more materials that you will see in the exhibit and, and to help us to build the exhibit itself. Right, great, excellent, excellent. You ladies are doing a fantastic job and thank you, Sister Modesta, because you're over in Zimbabwe. I know that it is late, you know, over there. Thank you for having me. And thank you, uh, Sister Pat. I thank you as well too. Thank you, thank you. Please take the time to answer the survey at the end. We are interested in your feedback, things that we are doing that you like, things that you think we can do differently, um, things that you'd like for us to add. It will only make us better. Absolutely. And support these ladies and support the museum down in Atlanta. Um, I know as soon as you get it open, I know I'm, I'm gonna be humbled, you know, that she even invites me there because that's a great piece of history. And if I'm invited there, I'll feel humble even to be part of, of that. Thank you so much. All right, Thank Modi. Uh, we will be having more webinars every two weeks. We host more webinars and we are having a radio show, an internet radio show coming up. So we'll be updating you on that. Please check your emails from Before Slavery, who we'll send Frank's video recording, as well as an email and links to his books, so you can have that to yourself. But please check your emails. In two weeks' time, we're having another webinar with an exciting speaker. So yes, we appreciate you and kindly donate. Our website is beforeslavery.com. You can check out our website and you can donate there. Then our Facebook link is just before, before sl slavery, our Facebook page. Please follow us, share our page and uh, watch us grow. <laughs> thank Absolutely. you. Hey, thank, right. you. thank you. Thank you. All right, blessings. Have a blessed week, everyone. Thank you. Bye -bye.